Welcome to Horse Fights, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world. Another busy week on the schedule for top jumping and the start of a tremendous run over the next month or so with nonstop action across the globe. This week saw the spectacular Rolex Grand Slam of show jumping in Den Bosch, another five star in Wellington, and four stars out of Coapexpan, Mexico, WEC in Ocala, and the Sunshine Tour in the Hair. This week, we take a look at riders' win rates at the four and five star level and address the new rule put in place by the FEI to restrict audio visual content on social media at FEI named events. Certainly a doozy and brings into question the ethics of such a regulation. But first, let's take a look at this past week's big winners. First up, of course, the main event of the week. Hometown hero Willem Greva and Highway TN edged out world number one Henrik von Eckermann and King Edward by four hundredths of a second in Sir Togenbosch to win 330,000 euros and become the new Rolex Grand Slam live contender, squashing Richard Vogel's quest for the prize. Wellington saw an unexpected winner in the five-star Grand Prix as amateur equestrian Luciana Locio and the wonderful Lady Louise Jimen stole the spotlight from the men to top the podium at Weth. The four-star in Ocala saw former European champions Andre Time and DSP Shakaria take the win in the $200,000 class. Jessica Burke and Express Trend took the four-star Grand Prix in the hair in only a three-horse jump off. And the four-star in Coapex band saw Atlantica du Soleil Z and Nicolas Pizarro take the win against a relatively small field of only 21 horses. By the way, guys, YouTube is free, so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all our channels. Also, TikTok is coming soon. And sign up for our newsletter on our website and stay tuned for merch dropping soon. The more support we get, the better content we can bring you. Welcome to Showstopper, powered by Equiratings. This week, we wanted to cover win rates of the top riders in the world. How often do you think a rider wins a four or five star competition in a year? Once, twice, 20 times? Knowing there are over 95 stars in a given year, what would be considered a successful season? Well, only six riders have ever had more than four five-star Grand Prix or World Cup wins in a season. With four riders finishing the season with five wins to their names, the most recent being Daniel Deusser in 2022 and Scott Brash achieving it in 2014 and 2015. But top of the list is Kent Farrington with eight five-star Grand Prix and World Cup wins. The most prestigious of these eight wins was taking the Geneva Grand Prix in December of 2017. If we take a look at four and five-star wins, not just the five stars, since 2010, there have been 23 times that a rider has won five or more four or five-star Grand Prix in a season. 16 of these times have been riders winning five classes in a season, but there is a select group that have made it over this mark. Seven riders have made it into this group. The standout is still Kent Farrington in that spectacular 2017 season where he won nine top level Grand Prix or World Cup classes. For reference, world number one Henrik von Eckermann never had a season with over five wins and world number two Ben Mayer has never had more than four. So what does this tell us? The top riders in the world basically win at the four and five star level around 25% of the time they compete. So if you think that number sounds high, you're right. Imagine winning one in every four classes you entered. Pretty impressive, huh? And clearly why they are the best in our sport. Now let's take a quick pause and look at this amazing innovation in the world of equine compression bandages for rest, ride, and rehab. heard of RICE? No, not the food. The acronym for Rest, Ice, Compression, and Elevation for athletes? Well, rest, ice, and elevation are simple, but compression is always the one that's hardest to accomplish, especially with sensitive horses. Until now. Equicrown Canada's compression socks and bandages for horses are legit amazing. I had plenty of horses in my career that would kick the bandages off, or I had an inexperienced groom who I wouldn't quite trust to bandage with even pressure, or a horse that got rubs from protective boots until I started using Equicrown Canada's compression socks. They were literally perfect as an alternative to rundowns while riding that provided support, 
They offered compression to help increase blood flow after heavy exercise, and they provided an unbelievable solution for eliminating accumulated fluid and toxins in the leg and keep swelling at bay. I don't even ride anymore, and I still recommend this product to everyone I know with horses. My grooms loved the ease of putting them on, the horses would stand for hours unbothered by them, and I trusted that they were getting even compression that was safe and reliable. Basically, awesome product, awesome brand, couldn't recommend it more. Order yours today on www.equicrowncanada.com. After we spoke last week about the importance of social media in expanding exposure for our sport, this week on Weekly Wonder, we're going to break down the ironically recently imposed FEI restrictions regarding publishing content on social media for non-rights holders. Our industry is super unclear about content rights and who owns what, who has the ability to use what, and what can and can't be posted. To break it down, let's discuss the new guidelines the FEI just released on February 12th and only released to the press and stakeholders last week. Main takeaways. The FEI is retaining all rights to video at FEI named events and forbids riders, grooms, owners, and even accredited press to capture video footage on the field of play, which includes the competition area as well as the warm-up. First off, FEI named events is unclear. It basically covers events that use the word FEI in them, such as FEI World Cups, FEI Nations Cups, and FEI World and European Championships. It does not include other FEI events where the name FEI isn't in the title. Super confusing. Riders and national federations are allowed to post their ride, but such footage is to be provided via FEI socially exclusively. Well, socially is a content distribution platform. And in this instance, FEI will record your round, share it with you, essentially giving you the right to use it, and then you can share across your own social platforms but that means they are monitoring and potentially editing, restricting, preventing full coverage of said event. Oh, and you're restricted from editing or transforming in any shape or form the content provided to you. Is this censorship, content control, or protection of visual rights? FEI says this provides clear guidelines for what they call non-rights holders. However, it's very suspicious whether the decision was made for their own commercial purposes. With financial stakes involved with the videoing streaming of the content, or whether this is the FEI's attempt to control visual messaging and narrative of our sport, given the scrutiny we are under from animal welfareists. And this is in bold in the document released by the FEI. For all non-rights holders, this includes athletes, any support personnel and or entourage, including grooms, agents, private videographers, owners, NFs, officials, or accredited media, including broadcasters. So basically everyone. It is strictly forbidden to film and sell footage of the field of play or to otherwise commercially exploit such footage. So basically at these specific events, you cannot film yourself and post it in any way. So goodbye to the swarms of private content creators that have recently exploded onto the scene, creating beautiful, dynamic videos that help promote our sport for athletes, brands, and potential sponsors. A huge blow to what was finally looking like a step forward in terms of equestrian coverage. And lastly, the most regulatory aspect of the rule is that the FEI reserves the right to pursue the removal of content on any channel if the publication of such content breaches these guidelines. And additionally, they may request the organizer to remove the person's event accreditation. Oh, and at the end, the FEI kindly requests that you tag them if you do post the content they provide to you. And of course, still photos are still fine to use. So to sum it up, big changes in terms of content rights as the FEI mixes things up. You'd think they'd focus on revamping the PR of this sport and put more positive content out instead of restricting content. But the big question remains, is this for the FEI to make money or truly coming from a place of protection of the visuals of, to the general public? And speaking of controversial visuals, let's take a look at the wild things from the week. <laughs> 
First up, cantering to the jump. Oy, that's uh, not a good distance. Yikes, that's what we call a pop chip. And the rail goes flying, but obviously they're okay. And then here she's coming to the cross tail. Oy, ah, she runs the girl over and then she falls off. Oh my God, let's look at this again. Knocks her friend over and then hits the dust. Well, those are your wild things of the week. If these bloopers made you chuckle, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons for more. And if you have one you'd like to share, please send it along and get an opportunity to be featured on the show. That's a wrap on this week's top highlights. Stay tuned to all of our socials. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow along all the action as it unfolds here on Horse Bites, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world.